Hello, my name is Father Kurt, and we are going through To Be a Christian in Anglican Catechism, and today we're going to be talking about the sacraments. What are sacraments, and why are they so important? So you can follow along. On a, We'll start with question 121, but before we get into that, let's take a moment and pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. All right, so we're looking at question 121 here, and we're going to be talking about the sacraments. What is a sacrament? A sacrament is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. God gives us the sign as a means by which we receive that grace and as a tangible assurance that we do, in fact, receive it. So while the word sacrament isn't found uh, in Scripture, like the word Trinity, it does describe a very profound and basic reality of our world that is revealed through Scripture. When we read through Scripture, we see that God loves to do spiritual things through physical means. Think, for example, back to the great story of the Passover and the deliverance of the, God's people from Egypt. What did he have them do? He had them sacrifice a lamb, and he had them put that physical blood of the lamb on their door. And in doing that, with that outward and visible sign, he saved them. Right? He saved them, uh, the firstborn sons of the Hebrew people, and delivered them from Egypt. So God had, why does God do this? Because God has made us embodied souls. And so he feeds our souls through embodied ways. Sort of like, think about a hug from a mom and how it fills up a child's heart like only a hug can do. You need the physical sign, and that sign not only shows you love, but it actually communicates that love into the life of the child. So a, sa so a sacrament is an outward physical sign of an inward and spiritual grace, which is a means of that grace being given to us. So it's the way that that grace is given to us. Jesus himself institutes two sacraments for the church that are called the sacraments of the gospel, meaning they're, they are those sacraments that are instituted by the Lord. Now, historically, this idea of sacrament has always been fundamental to the church. The earliest descriptions we have of, of the Christian worship from Justin Martyr show that they met around the sacrament of the altar, around the Lord's Supper, around communion. Now, from the earliest times of the church, there's also been a heresy lurking about called Gnosticism. And this heresy denies that the physical world is good. It denies that the physical wor world is good. And this heresy is always seeping, trying to seep into the church. And so, because so many people unconsciously, or so unconsciously, subconsciously view creation <clears throat> as evil, they have a very hard time accepting that God would use physical, material, created things to actually bring his life to us. And this is why, sadly, in many modern churches, communion is only celebrated, if, it, if celebrated at all, maybe it's celebrated once or, uh, or twice a year. So let's continue. <clears throat> How should you receive the sacraments? I should receive the sacraments by faith in Christ with repentance and thanksgiving. Faith in Christ is necessary to receive the grace of the sacraments, and obedience to Christ is necessary for the benefits of the sacraments to bear fruit in my life. So sacraments are not mechanical. They are relational, and this is a key point. If you get baptized or take communion, it doesn't automatically bring any benefit to you. It's not like going to a Coke machine, putting in a dollar, hitting a button, and a Coke pops out. That's not what sacraments are. It's not a mechanism whereby we somehow get God to do things for us, dispense his grace to us. The sacraments are not mechanical. They are not a transactional reality. They are a relational reality. Back to the analogy of the hug, right? A hug from mom communicates and gives the gift of love to the child because the child receives that love within the context of a relationship. Likewise with the sacraments. God, the all-powerful, almighty God, stoops down to us to give his life 
his gift of life to us and love. But it doesn't benefit us unless we receive that life in relationship. And the foundation of relationship is always trust. When we entrust ourselves to God, then we receive the gift that he gives us in the sacrament. Furthermore, when we obey God, we begin to see the power of that sacrament manifest in our life. A child who knows that she or he is loved, that, that's evident in the entirety of their life. And you can see it with a child that doesn't know they're loved. It's evident in their life. And so we receive that love and then we work it out into our lives through obedience. So sacraments must never ever be viewed transactionally. And I think a lot of people, um, in addition to this sort of Gnostic understanding that they have and they don't know they have, which makes them resist sacraments, it's also seeing the sacrament abused in this way, seeing it as sort of a transactional reality and not as a relational reality. It's not punching a ticket and it's not some sort of work to earn a, to earn a spot with God. Okay, that's not what the sacraments are. Question 123, what sacraments were ordained by Christ? The two sacraments ordained by Christ that are generally necessary to salvation, and there it's quoting the 1662 um, Catechism, are baptism and Holy Communion, also called the Lord's Supper or the Holy Eucharist. These are sometimes called the sacraments of the gospel. These two sacraments are, quote unquote, necessary, generally necessary for salvation. Now, what does that mean? Well, these words are chosen very carefully. The word generally is important to notice here. We understand that God has given us certain normal ways that we can trust to be, uh, to find him, to find his grace for us. And those are the sacraments. But we also don't deny the fact that God can color outside the lines if he chooses to do so. Sometimes people have true faith in Christ and don't have the opportunity to be baptized. This is not a problem for God, okay? The sacraments are for us. They're not for God. They're for us and for our salvation and our comfort and our knowledge. So God is not limited by the sacraments. The sacraments are a gift to us. Now, Christ institutes two sacraments, baptism and Holy Communion, which goes by many other names, the Lord's Supper or Holy Eucharist. And we're familiar with his institution of these in uh, Luke chapter 22, 19 through 20, when, where Christ says, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So that's where he institutes, institutes communion. And then he institutes a baptism, famously, Matthew 28. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Continuing, question 124, are there other sacraments? Other rites and institutions commonly called sacraments include confirmation, ordination, marriage, absolution, and the anointing of the sick. These are sometimes called the sacraments of the church. So there are five other rites and institutions commonly called sacraments, and they are not instituted by Jesus. Arguably, arguably um, confession and absolution is. But the church has recognized them as sacraments through time because they have we we've noticed the church has noticed that there's a profound connection between the physical and the spiritual communication of god's grace to us in these rites confirmation we're going to talk about all these later in, a, in another video confirmation is when someone testifies of their faith in front of the church and the and the hands of the bishop are laid upon them and they become full members of the church ordination the hands of the bishop are laid on an on an ordinance and they become uh, a priest, an elder, and um, they receive a special gift from the Holy Spirit for that office in the church. Marriage, it's the union of a man and a woman together by a promise under God for the bringing of life into the world. Absolution, this, this one arguably was instituted by Christ because we have this passage in John um, where Jesus, after he resurrects, he, said, peace, he says, peace be with you. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. So the, the, there's some debate on this one. The, and what, so what is absolution? Well, it's the performative announcement of forgiveness of sins through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And like I said, we'll get, get more into this in later videos. And then finally, the anointing of the sick. 
for temporal or eternal healing in life or at death. Oil and prayer, as we see in James, St. James tells us in his epistle, bring healing by the power of God. All right, continuing, question 125, here's our last question. How do these differ from the sacraments of the gospel? They were not ordained by Christ as necessary to salvation, but arose from the practices of the apostles and the early church, or were blessed by God in scripture. God clearly uses them as means of grace. See, COVID has really solidified in my mind the importance of the sacraments. Uh, here, here's the truth. Zoom church is not church. It's not church. God brings his grace through physical presence and physical means. This is why the church needs to meet together bodily so that we can receive the inward and spiritual grace through the outward and physical signs that God's given us. It, it, you can't give a hug through Zoom, to put it simply, right? We need the physical embodied presence to be fully alive. And practically speaking, as Christians, we should always be making use of these sacraments as much as we can, okay? especially, especially the sacrament of the altar, the Eucharist. In order to be sustained in our walk and grow in closeness to God without sacraments, what do we do? Well, you see, with Christians who do not have a powerful sacramental practice, they create all other kinds of ways to try to get in touch with God. And often these ways are, are foolish, unhelpful, and dangerous. So uh, I'll give you one example. Mod modern church is often trying to get in touch with God through very... Um, very emotional praise music. Now, I'm not against contemporary Christian music at all, um, but what I'm saying is that if you try to make that a sacrament, there's some things that happen. Um, it becomes very much a show, um, and, and it very much can become isolating. There's a lot of really, if you try to, see, worship music is wonderful, but if you try to make that the sacrament, it can become all about emotionalism, and it can be very confusing for people. And so um, what I'm trying to say here is instead of trying to make our own sacraments, our own places to find God, we need to come back to the sacraments that Christ has instituted and the church has discovered because we know that God can be found there. And we, can know, and we know that when we're in trouble, we can meet him there. And so when we go to the sacraments, we go there with a heart of trust to receive Christ and his healing. All right, well, that's all I have for today. Uh, sorry, it, it took a while to get this out there. I, it's been busy for me. I had my um, third child. So thank you for your patience. And we'll start doing these on a weekly basis again now. If you like this video, please leave a comment below and hit the like button and share with your friends. And I will see you next week.